For decades, the process of installing wheel bearing adjustment nuts with three and four piece systems has been the industry standard. While effective, this process is cumbersome and inefficient. Metform has developed a new one piece wheel bearing nut that provides faster installation to improve efficiency. Introducing the new Axle Lock Unitized Wheel Bearing Nut System. Axle Lock is a simple wheel bearing adjustment nut to install and is dramatically increasing in popularity with vehicle manufacturers. Installation instructions presented in this video are intended for use only where the vehicle OEM has not created specific instructions. Follow vehicle manufacturer's instructions whenever they exist. Through this video, you will learn how to properly remove, inspect, and reinstall the product. Axle Lock is a unitized part with four components, including the nut body, two locking clips, and the retainer cage. The nut body is the base to which the other components are attached. Markings atop the nut body assist in the identification of each Axle Lock size and include the correct size of socket to be used. In this case, the nut body is stamped AX123250, which indicates a 12 thread per inch, 3.250 or 3 and 1 quarter inch diameter threaded nut. The socket marking informs installers that use of a 4 inch hex, 6 point socket is required. The second and third components are called locking clips. Each spring steel clip has two legs. One leg on each is staked to the slot in the hex of the nut body and the other pushes away from the nut body. The legs are connected at the top and the connection is supported by a rivet. At the bottom of the outer leg of each locking clip is the locking clip tab. The last component is the retainer cage which wraps around the axle locks base. The retainer cage has two key features, a retainer cage tab or a D-flat on the bottom and adjustment slots around its rim. The retainer cage tab or D-flat must match the profile of the axle spindle. This key locking mechanism prevents rotation of the cage on the spindle. The adjustment slots work with the locking clips to prevent or permit rotation of the nut body within the retainer. Three criteria of the axle must be checked for compatibility prior to installation. First, ensure that the thread size is the same on both components. Secondly, inspect the spindle to ensure the threads and slot or D-flat are not damaged. Third, component stack up and installed axle lock position are critically important. Do not use axle lock product on this spindle unless each of these conditions are met. If the third criteria is not met, the result could be a damaged retainer cage tab. Because the tab is at the leading edge or inboard surface of the axle lock when placed on the spindle, any improper component matching will likely damage it. If the retainer cage tab is damaged, the axle lock nut is unserviceable. Therefore, it is important to assure that the proper slot length and component stack up occur on each axle end. There are three distinct types of spindle ends, two slot type and a D-flat style. The first slot type shown here requires that axle lock be installed outboard of the spindle slot radius. Damage could result if any portion of the installed axle lock were inboard of the spindle slot radius. A second example demonstrates the second type of slot. Again, for axle end safety, it is critical that the installed axle lock position be outboard of the slot radius. A third illustration demonstrates the D-flat type spindle end, and again, the proper installed position of axle lock is outboard of the last thread. Do not use axle lock on the axle end if you are uncertain. A traditional wheel bearing nut system or different single piece system would be a better selection in this case. To assemble, place the axle lock into a compatible six point socket. Verify clip compression. Align axle lock retainer cage tab or D-flat with spindle slot or D-flat. Start and rotate the socket clockwise until you make contact with bearing cone. Attach socket to properly calibrated torque wrench. Torque axle lock nut to initial torque specifications for that axle lock in instructions. Do not over torque. 
Use the torque wrench to back the axle lock off one half turn. Now tighten the axle lock to the final torque specification as given in the written instructions. Then use the torque wrench to back the axle lock off one quarter turn. This will result in end play. Remove the socket and allow the locking clip tabs to engage the adjustment slots in the retainer. If the locking clips do not protrude through the adjustment slots, rotate the nuts slightly in the tightening direction. This should result in locking clip tab engagement in the retainer cage adjustment slots. Again, verify proper tab position. Next, measure the end play. If the desired end play is not achieved, adjustments can be made in increments given in the instructions provided with your axle lock. The, the amount of nut travel for each increment of adjustment is listed in the increments of adjustment column in the written instructions. Make adjustments by placing the socket completely over the axle lock nut hex. Rotation in a clockwise direction will reduce end play, while a counterclockwise rotation will increase end play. After adjustments are made, remove the socket and check to make sure the locking tabs protrude from the adjustment slots. Manual installation should take an experienced installer about 75 seconds, a time savings of about 40% when compared to the standard industry practice with three-piece systems. Even greater time savings are realized with axle lock when adjustments are needed. Although these axle locks may look alike at quick glance, each represents a different circumstance an installer may encounter. In the first example, the locking clip position shows the tab is not protruding from one of the adjustment slots, but the outer leg of the clip is flush with the surface of the retainer cage adjustment ring. This shows that this locking tab is broken or damaged. This axle lock is unsafe to use and must be removed and replaced. A similar looking axle lock also shows the tab not protruding from an adjustment slot. However, the outer leg of the clip is not in contact with the retainer cage. This shows that the tab and adjustment slots are not properly aligned. Turn the axle lock slightly until the locking clip tab engages an adjustment slot. The final condition shows a proper axle lock locking clip tab position. Note that the tab protrudes from an adjustment slot and the outer leg of the clip is flush with the surface of the retainer cage adjustment ring. Removal of the axi lock is a simple procedure. Once the preliminaries of lubricant draining and outer seal removal have been performed, the top of the axi lock is visible. This enables the technician to determine the proper six point socket size to be used on the axi lock by reading the markings on top. Attach the correct six-point socket to a torque wrench to remove the axle lock. Place the socket completely over the hex of the axle lock to compress both locking clips. Apply a small amount of torque, no more than 50 foot-pounds, to the axle lock nut and turn in a counterclockwise direction. If the axle lock does not move freely, stop. Make sure that the socket is fully engaged and that the axle lock locking clips are fully retracted from the locking tab retainer cage adjustment slots. If the socket was not fully engaged, correct to achieve full disengagement of locking clips, then resume removal. If axle lock still will not turn, rotate nut slightly in tightening direction, then reverse to removal direction. The nut should then rotate freely until its threads disengage from the spindle threads. Repeat if necessary.